What's going on? It's your man, Corey. Welcome to the Digital Dash, where I'll be giving you tips on how to market your songs and get those numbers booming. Now, today, what I want to do is give you my music marketing predictions for 2020. Now, last year, I did a very similar video with my music marketing predictions for 2019, and I'm not the type to brag, man. I'm a pretty humble guy, but if you go look at that video, I was right on a couple of things. So, I decided just to give you guys some insight into what I'm looking forward to in 2020 based on conversations that I had with artists or just based on information that we've seen here at Brandman or just with clients that I bring through through my agency. And hopefully some of these things will start to help you figure out how you're going to plan out your 2020. And maybe there are some couple of things that you can stumble upon that might help you cross some of those goals that you were trying to reach in 2019. Now, before we get into all of that, come and follow me on Instagram. I'll make sure to put my ad name on the screen. Come talk to me, come engage with me, come give me some video ideas. All of that good stuff. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. Now, my first prediction for 2020 is that TikTok will become a major force. And if you've noticed, recently we've been going hard for TikTok and artists migrating to it over here on the channel, and that's for great reasons. Currently, it is the only social media platform that is completely audio driven, meaning that the viral content on the platform is being powered by the sound and the music that is behind it. That is completely unheard of, and in my opinion, it sounds like the perfect social media platform for any music artist or anyone making any type of sound based stuff now on top of that TikTok is slated to release its on streaming platform in mid 2020 and we're looking at it like it's going to be a serious competitor to Spotify to Apple music to title and all of the major streaming platforms that we think of now and you may be wondering Corey how does a lip syncing app that is dedicated towards teenagers, how, will, how are you guys expecting that to compete with Spotify? And let me paint this picture for you. Think about this. When TikTok creates its streaming platform, it will be the only streaming platform, the only streaming platform with a built-in influencer base. Meaning that any artist who comes to TikTok, when TikTok decides to start doing campaign release plans for artists, very similar to what Spotify does when they put people on the cover and stuff, they can go directly into their base, hit these influencers, go you, 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 and you, you're promoting this song, boom, you the artist now have instant 10 million, 20 million people reached, and that's something that Spotify, Apple Music, entitled can't quite deliver to people yet now on top of that tiktok is the only social media platform right now where you can get more views and more engagement than your following like i've seen artists on there who have 10 followers and they get videos with 10 to 20 thousand views and you can actually grow pretty fast on there and get a lot of natural engagement that you just aren't seeing on any other platform right now and then on top of that if i have to bring it back to the marketers world, what you know, we use it for on a day-to-day -day basis is the influencers. The influencers on TikTok are cheap because most of them are teenagers who are not used to being asked what are their promo prices. So I'm getting bad prices from influencers with millions of followers to hundreds of thousands of followers who are charging me a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, maybe even a thousand. And the prices that I'm seeing for these influencers coupled with the natural engagement that they get because TikTok is not limiting its reach like other social media platforms makes for an interesting combination of influencer campaigns that can be done on TikTok. And like I said, I don't see TikTok going away anytime soon. I think it's going to get bigger. I think it could potentially become bigger than Instagram and Twitter, at least in 2020. And if nothing else, it's going to become the go-to platform for music artists. Because like I said, it's the only platform that's based around music and based around audio. Now, my second prediction for 2020 is that there will be an increased value in long form content from the artist to the consumer. Now, if you watch my video from last year, my music marketing predictions for 2019, one of the predictions I made was that we were going to start to see more long form content from mainstream and you know, cracking into mainstream artists. And that's because most of these platforms are starting to advocate for longer form content. YouTube is advocating for longer content and is even starting to emphasize videos that are over like six to eight minutes. Facebook is emphasizing long form content with its Facebook watch and the ever so popular Instagram has been emphasizing long form content by going really hard for IGTV. So what does that mean for you the artist that means that you are no longer subjugated to 
trying to tell your story in a three minute clip or a two minute music video or a 15 second Instagram story. You now have the freedom and the willingness from the audience to put your story out into a 15 minute vlog or a 20 minute crate digging video that shows you making beats or even more interesting long form content that you can create that may not even have anything to do with your music. Think Kenny Beats the Cave and how he kind of brings in artists that he doesn't normally work with. Fans are looking for content like that from artists. And part of the reason why is that because we are now starting to look at artists like content creators, which they're basically the same thing, but now the public is starting to treat them like the same thing. Meaning that if I, you know, a fan of my favorite content creator, am expecting this high quality long form content over whatever consistent periods of time, I'm now starting to expect the same thing from the artists that I look at. Because at the end of the day, music artists are no different than TV networks. You have to figure out how to entertain your audience with different various pieces of content that make sense for your brand and the messaging that you're trying to push. But what I'm telling you is that now the world actually wants to hear long form content, whether it be vlogs, like I said, crate digging videos, podcast or whatever. People actually want to hear from you for an extended amount of time. And my last music marketing prediction for 2020 is that there will be a decrease in Spotify playlisting or playlisting as a whole for artists. You may be wondering, Corey, why do you think there's going to be a decrease in playlisting? What have you seen that would make you think that? A lot of this is just speculation, but some of this stems from policies that Spotify has recently made. So this past year, 2019, Spotify has went really hard at trying to crack down on bot playlists and fake playlists that have been like running amok on Spotify. So if you've ever tried to do a playlisting campaign yourself, you know how crazy it gets with the bot playlists and how they are on Spotify. Now, because of this, Spotify is now starting to attack and deem any playlist curator that charges money for their playlist or that they don't feel like it's favorable they started to treat them like scam playlists, bot playlists, and get them shut down accordingly. What this is starting to cause is a distrust amongst artists and curators. There's a distrust between curators and Spotify because it's like, hey, if I'm not an official Spotify playlist, you can just shut me down at any time. Whether or not I'm using you know, good or bad marketing tactics to grow my playlist, you're going to treat me like a bad playlist anyway. So what you'll start to see is the good curators, right? The curators who are actually using good traffic methods to grow their playlist, they're gonna get fed up. They're gonna get tired of being treated like these scam playlists and they're gonna want to eventually transfer to something else, some other platform that treats them a lot better or stop doing it overall, right? And what does this mean for the artist? This means that you will have to start to rely on a lot more foundational marketing things to grow yourself out than just playlisting. What I've noticed is that a lot of artists like to do playlisting because it's instant number. Get into a playlist, tomorrow you have 20,000 streams, it looks nice, it feeds the ego. But on the back end, playlisting is a black data hole. 20,000 people hear you from a playlist, you have no way to talk to those 20,000 people. Couple that with the fact that Spotify may shut down your most reliable playlist, the one that's bringing you the most traffic, and then you just end up being ass out and just left out to Spotify's mercy with nothing to do. So what I've been recommending to artists is that you should stray a little bit more away from just doing playlisting. There are more marketing tactics out there that will work better for you in the long run than just playlisting. Focus on paid advertising, focus on your content marketing, focus on creating viral content on some of these other platforms and then figuring out how to funnel and systemize that traffic onto Spotify so that you don't have to rely so heavily on Spotify playlisting. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to get so much harder, so much harder and then the fact that we already see that mostly major label artists get onto these Spotify playlists, trust me, it's only going to get a lot worse. So just start figuring out now how you're going to be ahead of the curve so that when these other artists are still like, Spotify playlisting is not working for me, you're onto some other stuff that you know is working out for you. So there we have it. Those are my music marketing predictions for 2020. Now, like I said, I would love to hear if there's anything that you think is going to be different from 2020. Where have you been seeing marketing yourself? What are some tactics and trends that you see working out for other artists that you think are going to spill over or carry over into 2020? And which of these things are you looking to implement into your music marketing strategy and putting yourself out there? And side note, going back to the TikTok stuff, if you're an artist who's interested in figuring out TikTok and you just really don't know where to get started, we actually released a TikTok course over on the Brand Man Network. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description below. Now, as always, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey, and I'll see you next time.